Ezekiel was commanded to prophesy to a valley of dry bones. As he prophesied, the dry bones were transformed into a living army. Our guest today is Francis Armstrong, preaching at Dominion Conference about what God is about to do in our nation. Francis is fired up, so stay tuned to Lifeline today. Welcome to Lifeline today. So good to have you with us on the program, Joan. We're going to have a great time uh, because one of our very, very, very good friends, we're very closely connected with this man, Francis Armstrong from Third Day Worship Center in Kingston, mm -hmm. Ontario. He's on the program through Dominion Conference. Well, he was at Dominion Conference, Dick, and he said uh, when he started the uh, message that he had another message already to preach. But then he heard his wife and me talking in the green room and we were talking about how, you know, we just felt that there, mm. uh, Canada was like dry bones and there were so many people in Canada who needed a, a fresh touch of God and that fresh breath of God, you know, to bring them to life, to bring dreams to life. Mm. And he said, when, when he heard us talk, the Lord spoke to him and said, you know what, you need to preach on the dry bones in Canada because yes. Canada is going to experience something. So for those who don't know their Bible, that's from Ezekiel 37. <laughs> yes. And it's a very uh, unique and powerful passage of Scripture. Of course, it does apply directly to Israel prophetically. You know, mm -hmm. Ezekiel was prophesying about a nation that would come from nothing in mm -hmm. uh, uh, time. And it says, uh, the Lord says to Ezekiel, go and prophesy. No, first of all, he shows them a valley filled with dry bones. He says, what do you see? And he says, a bunch of dead <laughs> dry bones, you know. And then it's kind of an interesting conversation because it's the Lord speaking to the prophet and says, well, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And he doesn't even want to answer. He says, well, Lord, you know. <laughs> and then It the looks so impossible to him. Totally. And you so know. then the Lord says to him, well, Ezekiel, prophesy. Yeah. Prophesy to the dry bones. There's something that we need to see in that, Joan, yes. is that the Word of God, when it's <laughs> delivered as a prophetic decree, has power. And that we can speak to our situation. Yeah. And we can infuse our situation with the life that, of God. And we should say, when you have really prayed about Absolutely. it, and have really been given God's revelation on what mm -hmm. you're going to say about that situation, because the Lord said to him, prophesy yeah. life to these bones. <laughs> and then, uh, but the context that Francis is using it in is he's taking that principle, that picture, and he's applying it to, uh, well, the world today, but also to our nation. To our nation. Can these bones and, and, live? And especially to the church in our nation. Uh, I think so, you know, yeah. Because Elements of the church. And we'll talk about that a little later, but there are so many people we believe in the church who have lost dreams, lost hope. It says, you know, this is, this is referring to a company of people who have lost hope. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so there's going to be hope. Well, and the other thing today. about this pa passage from Ezekiel 37, they start as dry bones. Yeah. They end up an army as and a very great, great army. army. Mm -hmm. And so that's quite a transformation. That's yes. quite a journey. And uh, because it's not only talking about just coming alive, yeah. then they become this mighty army and there alive is an application. with a purpose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there is a, a very clear application here. So I think you're going to really enjoy this. This is Francis Armstrong at Dominion Conference. I was, I was going to preach another message and I heard, I heard um, Joan talking to Edith and she said something about Ezekiel. And the minute she said what she said about Ezekiel, the Lord said, that's what I want you to preach. And um, there's a question that the Lord's asking us, that he asked the prophet. I believe this is so significant for our nation. And the question he asked him is, can these bones live? And, and that's not a question that we can answer lightly. Because there's all sorts of prophetic significance to the question. But, but if you'll allow me let, me, let me take you back through. Because sometimes we read a portion of scripture without understanding the context of the verse. Or the book for that matter. So if you'll allow me, I want you to let me take you back before we get to chapter 37. 
And, and as a matter of fact, let's go back to chapter 1, but please do not get quiet on me. I'm one of these participatory preachers. You say amen, I preach better. You don't talk, I, you know, I talk faster. But I feel something in here. And if I take off, cameraman, I'll come back. But, but, but look at how, this is, this is how, this is weighty. I feel this for the nation. I feel this, what I'm going to tell you right now. Because we've wondered how, friend, you asked this question, what, what, is, what is it we're, we're seeing? Verse 1 of, of, of Ezekiel chapter 1 says, And it came to pass in the 13th year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. The first thing that stands out when I read that is that he was in captivity. And yet even in that captivity, he gets a vision. Most people I know that are in captivity complain. Prophets see beyond the circumstance to what God is saying. Even in their captivity, God shows him an open heaven and the visions. Then look at verse 4. And this is what I believe is so significant for this conference, and I believe this, this happened today. It says, then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north. No, you did not hear me. It says a whirlwind was, had come out of the north. No, you did not hear me. It says a whirlwind have come out of the north. Do you understand that most Americans that come to Canada prophesy that something's about to come from Canada down through America, down through Central America, that God is wanting to raise up this nation, that this is our time, this is our season, and this is our hour, that there is something coming in the realm of the Spirit that is whirlwind-like. That Do you understand that in the Jewish calendar that this is the year of the whirlwind? This is the, come on, Ayen, hey, this is the year of the whirlwind. Come on, church, this is the year that something, watch what it says, coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of its mist like the color of amber out of the midst of the fire. This was a whirlwind of fire coming from the north. Help me somebody in here. If you drop down to verse 28, it says this. Like the appearance, because, friend, you said this, like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so is the appearance of the brightness all around it, that the appearance of the likeness was of the glory of the Lord. So when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one speaking. I believe what this is talking about and what is being released here is not just another presence conference. Not just another anointed conference or anointing conference. This is a glory conference. And that's why we're feeling the weight of this thing. And that's why there's a different feeling in here. And because it's, it's the weight of the glory of God that he wants to deposit over this nation. We need the glory. We've had presence conference. We've had anointed. We've had all of that stuff. This is about a conference of the glory of the Lord where quite possibly we'll spend most of our time laying on the ground and not hearing from preacher after preacher. Come on, somebody. Do we need another sermon? No. We need an encounter with the God of heaven. We need an encounter with the fire of God. We need an encounter with something from heaven that will transform Transform us forever and ever and ever. When I met Jesus as a 22-year-old man, I encountered him in all of his glory. It blew my mind when I, when I found out what he had done for me. I can never take, it for light, never take lightly what he's done for us. So I believe that what this verse is talking about, but watch what happens. He says to Ezekiel, here's your mandate. He says, son of man, in chapter 2, he says, stand on your feet, and I'm going to speak to you. Remember, this is the Old Testament. It says, then the Spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me, and he said, son of man, I'm sending you to the children of Israel. I'm sending you to a rebellious people. So, I, I, you know, I looked at that, and I said, well, God, obviously it's going to take the glory to break the rebellion." Are you hearing me? So, so watch. So despite the vast majority of Canadians that believe in God, many have very little involvement in church. 
and their life is not really affected by the gospel that they say they, they read. In 9-11, 2001, church attendance was at an all-time high for two weeks. Stick with me, I'm going somewhere with all this. So the problems that we are facing is the system. Amen? Here's the question, we're, we have, which one are we in? Are we in the kingdom of God or are we in the Babylonian system? Every now and then you might hear me say, shut up devil. So both of those systems have beliefs, they have values, and they have culture. And so when Israel came out of Egyptian slavery, they had a hard time leaving Egyptian culture. Are you with me? Even in their freedom, when Moses was gone, they went back to worshiping a golden calf, fashioned after what they saw in Israel. So Babylon was not slavery, it was captivity. Captivity was about changing how the people of God think. Stick with me. So if I can change how you think, then I can change your perception. And if I can do that, then I can change your image. Daniel prophesied that in the last days, the devil would try to come to change times and seasons and laws. So do you understand that we are, we are in that time right now? Where, where, where laws are being changed. So prophetically, we're being set up. And even though it looks real bad out there, I'm telling you it's a setup for the glory of God that's about to come to this nation. And, and come on. And we are in a moment right now of a divine setup. You did not come to, an, to a conference. You came to an encounter. So, so... If, here's, let me give an example. If we look at the world and we look at the church, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of difference. We, we talk like them, act like them, dress like them, watch what they watch. And I know under a wrong grace message that would be okay. Are you hearing me? So it seems like we're okay in this Babylonian system because we're so caught up in it we can't tell the difference. Amen? Amen. Len said it this way, we're, we're stuck in one dimension. Amen? So it's a confining system, yet it has the appearance of freedom. So in that, in that, in that appearance of freedom, you, you feel like there's a freedom there, but really you're confined. So in other words, you can live where you want, you can work where you want, you can almost do what you want, and that's the system that the Antichrist is going to take over because it's a captivity of the mind. And the captivity of the mind controls the function. Amen? So in other words, what do I do or what do I say? So, but, but we know biblically if you want to remove a strong man, you need one stronger than he. Amen? So Jesus rebuked the devil so we can rebuke the devil. Jesus removed the devil so you and I can remove the devil. Come on, somebody. Jesus Jesus took those keys, and now we have the keys. Come on, we've heard it all week now so far. But, but look, at, look at Ezekiel. God gives this prophet messages concerning Israel. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. So when you prophesy, you are speaking concepts from heaven into the air. So in this case, the prophet was speaking something that looked dead. Amen? Sometimes when there's a prophetic, there's, there's symbolic stuff that happens. We don't always understand what those symbolic things are or what they represent, but all of a sudden they start lining up. Here's the deal. Here's what you might miss. These were the bones. Are you, is this okay? This is Joan's fault. I had another mes message. This is her fault. These were the bones. Watch. These were the bones of, of at least a thousand or so Jewish young men that had died in captivity many years before under that Babylonian system. Watch this, watch this. And God comes to the prophet and looks at those bones and says, can these bones live? And I feel very strongly in my spirit. I don't, I don't claim to be a prophet. I, I claim to be a Christian. I don't know what I am. I was lost, now I'm not. 
So this is what I do know, though, that he's asking our country a question. Can these bones live? Amen? So we have got to answer that question carefully. And we've got to answer that question correctly. Amen? Because in a lot of ways, he's talking about us because we've been in a Babylonian system to some degree. Now here's what's key. Bones have to do with structure. Without your bones, you would be like a blob. Amen? And because people don't like structure, churches look like blobs. So what did he say? He said, prophesy concepts into the air. And there's no coincidence. He said, decree a thing. Speak to that, watch, which looks dead. And watch it come back to life. So I'm suggesting to you that Canada looks dead. Or has looked dead. But I didn't say it was dead. And the question is ringing out in my spirit, can these bones live? If two can come into an agreement, speak the vision, watch, so that people can run. What is a step below running? Walking. Walking means you are always in the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It means that we are constantly fighting death issues. All of your energy is spent fight, facing death issues. Running means you have a vision. Running means you can speak to the structure. Are you hearing me? Running means if you're going to go through a valley, then run through that valley and don't walk through that valley. Whatever you do, get to the other side. But you cannot stop running with the vision that God has placed in your heart or in your church. Help me preach somebody. Lift your voice like a mighty trumpet and shout in here. Come on. Come on, stand up for 30 seconds and give God a praise in the atmosphere. Hey! Hey, Jesus! Now, watch. Watch. Structure, structure, give me five more minutes. Structure speaks to the bones. That's the first thing he said to prophesy to. So there's this, watch, there's this valley of, uh, of a thousand or more young men that very, very dry stands up now. But all they are is bones. Then he says prophesy to the sinew. Why? Because it's the support system for the structure. Amen? You have to have all those veins running through your bones because you need that to support. Then watch. Then he says prophesy to the skin because the skin is our security that keeps everything in place. Are you hearing me? Then he says the very last thing, prophesy to the spirit. Amen. And everything in place, once everything's in place, the spirit comes. Amen. The kingdom of God comes as we work through the process. So these bones were not ordinary bones. They were, look at your neighbor and say they weren't ordinary. These were the bones of young Jewish men that had died without the promise. They had died without ever being circumcised. They had died without the covenant. And so when they died, they were buried in that hot desert and they died without the promise. So watch. So years later, Ezekiel is preaching to a generation that does not want to move that does not want to listen, so now God is going to raise up a dead promise. Yo, you're going to hear this preacher. There, there have been some decrees over this nation that seem to have fallen on the grave somewhere, amen? But God is going to raise up the dead promises that you thought that he had forgotten about, that there is about to become a resurrection that's going to hit that promise, it's going to hit that word, because God says the time for that promise to come to life is right now. Can these bones live? Oh, these bones can live in Jesus' name. There is about to come a revival that's going to hit this Shout in here. 
I said there's a revival. I declare to you a revival that is coming to you for... Shout in this church. I don't think you're getting it. That Babylonian system is going to break so that the system of glory and the system of heaven can come. It's time that we decree a thing and see it come to pass. Matthew 12, 20 says, A bruised reed Jesus will not break. A smoking flax he will not quench. Is your heart bruised today? Do you feel like a candle that's burning out? Jesus is there for you to heal and to restore. We're there for you too at the Lifeline Today Prayer Center. We want you to give us a call right now. We want to pray for you. Call 403-942-0123. Thank you, Joel. Yes, the prayer center is open. You know, Joel, we do get uh, quite a few of the prayer requests just even passed along to us here on the set. Yeah. And uh, here's a mother that asked for prayer for her son who's struggling with depression, a caller whose family mom member is involved with witchcraft. That would be pretty serious, wouldn't it? Mm. And a grandmother asking for prayer for her granddaughter who is in her first year at university, feeling very lonely, struggling with her faith, crying a lot. You know, wow. actually, uh, uh, statistics tell us that that is sometimes the most vulnerable and dangerous time in a person's spiritual life, is when they move from home, go to university, and they're in a new environment, and uh -huh. it seems like everything gets questioned and everything. And they say that is a very, very vulnerable time for people. Yeah. So those are just some of the people that call, and, and uh, there's many more, and we just want to encourage you, because the prayer center has a whole group of people that pray regularly. They'll call back, they'll minister to yeah, the individuals. Right. But Dick, I, I really believe we want to minister to some people that are watching today because they've uh, listened to the message and they've uh, connected with what he said about the dry bones. And I'm going to go to Ezekiel 37. And this is what um, these... Um, this is what these dry bones, it says these dry bones are the whole house of Israel. So we can apply that to us today as the church of God. And uh, it, they're saying our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Like that young girl who's in university and feeling so alone, she yeah. may just feel like she's just cut off from her roots, from her traditions, from whatever she knew, and, uh, and feels like a dry bone. And I, I just really believe that we're speaking to many people uh, right now that are watching across the nation. Can, can I interject a thought? Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting you said they feel like they're those dry bones. Yeah. And so Ezekiel in this particular passage, he looked at that valley of dry bones and he thought they were dry bones too. <laughs> there was only one who knew better. Yeah. Who was well, it? Well, there, there was the potential there. Well, of God them knew better. He said, breathe. God knew. He and knew. so he said to Ezekiel, he said, prophesy to the bones and say to them, O bones, hear the word of the Lord. So I just want to say to you today, if you're a dry bone, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord today. There is life coming into you. God is about to infuse something in you, new hope, new life. And then the most important thing, Dick, is when it says, breathe on the dry bones. And that breath of God is like the ruah of God. which Ruah is the Hebrew word for breath, life. The, the Hebrew word, which means, and I've got all the meanings here, to nourish to preserve alive and to quicken or recover or repair that which has been broken, to restore to life, to revive, to save and to make whole. That is in the breath of God for you today as we pray for you. I'm gonna pray for people right now because I believe there's so many that need a fresh wind in mm -hmm. their lives. Even that Francis mentioned that. Of Francis God. mentioned there's <laughs> concern for him you know, from his perspective of many Christian people who are operating like dry bones, you know, mm -hmm. and new life coming in. I want to pray for you. And uh, you know, Joan, the power thing, powerful thing about television, no time and distance in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. There is the presence of God right now, wherever you're watching this online, whether you're on television, mm -hmm. we're going to lift you up. Lord, I lift up mm -hmm. those who are watching this program today, those who are joined with us and they're one with us and set. And didn't you say in your word where two or three yeah. are gathered in your name, mm -hmm. you can agree on anything according to my will and it shall be done for them. So Lord, mm -hmm. I lift them up. And, and I think of that you, prayer request mm -hmm. of a student that's alone, mm 
Mm. Uh, going to university, depressed, very challenging time for this person. I pray for those who are in that type of situation mm. that are lonely and isolated and we pray for life to break forth into that darkness. And Lord, we, we speak a word of deliverance into them in Jesus' name. Now, Father, as I'm praying, I really feel mm. I need to pray for someone who's experiencing a very critical physical need. Oh. Uh, I mean, it's life and death right mm. now. And, and wh whoever you are, either you're a, uh, a loved one or you are watching this, I want to pray for a miracle. God says mm. it's not over. So we want to declare that over you, that it's not over. Don't say that to yourself, oh, it's over. I don't think I'll make it through this. I speak life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I speak healing in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. There's someone that needs life that from today. The dead. Yeah. And also, Dick, I just, uh, uh, again, going back to that area of depression, I feel in my spirit there are many people watching today who have just been, uh, just been so depressed and, and uh, so, like your hope is lost, like there's no hope anymore for your situation. I don't know what your situation is. Hmm. Could be um, a, a family matters, it could be divorce, it could be, you know, maybe you've lost a job, maybe, you know, uh, I don't know whatever it, else it is, but I, I just wanna pray to you today, for you today, because I am going to infuse hope into your life. Father, I thank you mm. that these dry bones can live. Father, and as I speak and prophesy to the bones, I thank you that you supernaturally mm. bring yeah. life into the dry bones. And now, Lord, I speak the very breath of God that brings life into the spirit that causes hope to rise. In Jesus' name, I speak life into the spirit of these ones who are watching. Mm -hmm. And Father, I thank you for a change taking place in them. In Jesus' name. Yeah. You know, it's interesting we're praying in that vein, Joan, because uh, as I look at all the needs that have been delivered to us on the set here today, <laughs> different uh, people that called in, heartbroken, I'm reading suicide, wow. uh, danger of uh, suicide, uh, just very uh, lonely, struggling mm -hmm. in their faith. So you can see there's a vein in that. Yes, and we can just say to you, call the prayer center right now. Do it right now. people that will pray with you. And remember this, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. See you next time. And bless you. Bye-bye. This program is supported by viewers like you, and we thank you for your partnership. We want to hear from you. Send us your prayer requests, praise reports, and comments on the program. Be sure to visit our website for up-to-date information or get in touch with us by email or phone. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.